I am in the Netflix documentary about the Murdochs. If you've seen it, you've seen me show footage I got of Alec Murdoch's brother and son carrying guns out of the home immediately following a search warrant that was performed at Moselle, the property that Maggie and Paul were murdered on. The guns used to kill them are still currently missing. I got a lot more footage that day than what Netflix showed in their documentary, so I'll be splicing some of that never-before-seen footage throughout this video. I'm actually filming this a day before the documentary comes out. I'm in my mobile studio right outside of the courthouse in Walterboro, South Carolina. Uh, trial's on a lunch break right now, and I wanted to take a few moments to give some expanded thoughts on uh, what I think about that gun footage that was in the Netflix documentary. I actually haven't seen the Netflix documentary, um, so I don't really quite know exactly how everything's going to be presented and how, like, where it's going to fit in and how it's going to be tied in. So I don't really know, you know, if they're going to make it seem really, really nefarious or if they're going to kind of portray it in the more like, we really don't know, this is what it is, um, which is kind of how I wanted it to be presented. I actually didn't know I was getting gun footage when I got it. Another reporter had come over and talked to me about kind of like what was going on and uh, I was making my way over to the house as we started talking I just kind of stopped the drone and let it let it hover for a little bit and it wasn't until later that I actually saw the footage but when I saw the footage I wrestled a lot with what to do with it. There was um, I, I think I've always believed and really still do believe that it's pretty unlikely that uh, that was anything nefarious going on. And at the time, I knew that if I put it out, it would probably be taken as, hey, this is pretty nefarious. Hey, this is Buster and John Marvin helping Alec hide the murder weapons or the guns or, or, or something like that. And, I, I you know, at, at that time, we had a lot less information. And at that time, there was a thought in my mind that what if Buster, who had just lost his mom and his brother, um, what if John Marvin was just taking him, you know, taking him on a hunting trip and they were trying to get away from all this crazy mess and now I'm going to be here putting out this footage that just causes them more stress and drama and um, that, that just felt icky to me. Um, but on the other hand, there's part of me that's like, well, what if this is, what if this actually is evidence that, that could help in these murders, that, that could help, you know, SLED or that could help, you know, whoever. And so I went back and forth on it for a long time. Sometimes when I don't know what decision to make, I will just uh, go with default inaction. And that's just kind of what I did. I was just like, well, I don't know what to do, so I'm just not going to do anything. I'm going to let this sit on my hard drive, and, uh, and it'll probably just die there. Fast forward um, eight months. And uh, through those eight months, you know, the, I would think about it every once in a while. As we were getting closer to a potential trial, there was still always that in the back of my mind. What if it means something? What if it is significant? And so anyways, the production company making the Netflix documentary reached out to license some of my drone footage. Long story short, uh, they ended up emailing me and said, you know, hey, we're coming to town to shoot some more things. We'd love to hire you as our drone operator while we're in town. So uh, really cool opportunity. Really glad I got to do that. But while I was there, um, well, to, to pause for a second, I didn't want to upload this footage anywhere to show anyone. I didn't want to, you know, upload it to a, a Dropbox account and then email someone and say, hey, take a look at this, you know, does this mean something? Uploading it somewhere, I just felt like there was a, a big risk of it just leaking and getting out and then I wanted to be really careful with it, so I didn't do that. And so I was at the Netflix shoot and thought to myself, you know, this might be a good opportunity to show someone this footage that has also done a ton of research into these events. You know, I thought to myself, I've got this piece of information, this gun footage, which on its own, we, we don't really know what it means. Um, maybe they have some information um, that I don't have that could either confirm that it is or isn't nefarious. And then we can kind of put it to rest. You know, they might have information that says, you know, hey, yeah, we do have info that SLED returned all the guns that they had taken from them initially because they had done all their testing and they were giving them back on that day. This footage doesn't mean anything. Or they might have information saying, hey, SLED you know, was at the house looking for guns and they didn't find any. And so you have footage of them leaving and now the Murdochs are taking these guns off the property. Maybe you know, they had hid them really well and now they were getting them off the property. You know, I, whatever, but maybe they have information that can provide more context to this gun footage that I have. So I showed it to them and they didn't. Um, and so I was kind of back at square one, but they obviously wanted the footage. 
And so I was kind of back at like debating, is this footage that needs to be out there or not? But the first thing was, I don't want to look back after this trial is over and, and know that maybe I had a piece of information that was pertinent, that could have brought justice to Maggie and Paul, that could have, you know, really aided in this investigation and put the killer behind bars. If, if, if even if there was only a 1% chance that that footage could have done that, if I just keep it to myself and don't do anything with it, that would be wrong. If I'm being, I'm going to be completely honest, and, and I tried really hard not to have this second factor be a factor. And, and I, I, I hope that it wasn't, but it's hard to say, honestly, even when I reflect on, you know, reflect on myself. You know, having this footage in the Netflix documentary would mean that I'm even more part of this Netflix documentary and potentially even in it. And so I, I, I really tried to push that second one aside and go, okay, is this first reason enough on its own to include this footage? And I ultimately came to the conclusion that, that it was. Now, let me back up for a second and talk about why I didn't just send this footage to SLED. So, there's two possibilities of what could have happened if taking the guns out of the home was nefarious. Possibility number one, uh, the Murdochs hid the guns, SLED came, searched the house, didn't find any guns, the Murdochs retrieved them from their hiding spot and took them away from the house, at, you know, on, on that day. Or, two, if this was nefarious, this is the second possibility. Um, Sled knew the guns were there. They were looking for them, but because of the Murdoch's connections with Sled, Sled allowed them, or the particular agents that were there that day, allowed them to take the guns off the house after they left and said, hey, you know, we didn't find any guns. I again, I thought at the time and still think now, both of those are very, very unlikely, but there's still a possibility. I, I didn't know. And so if I had sent this footage to SLED and SLED was involved in doing something that wasn't right, um, then essentially, you know, I, 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 this sounds ridiculous and, and I know it does, um, but I didn't, I didn't want to be put at risk. Um, I, I didn't want to be in danger from that. Um, if they know that I've got this footage, no one else knows this footage is out there and it could impl impl implicate SLED and the Murdochs in, in, in something, you know, e even bigger. So. Um, and in my mind, there was a half a percent chance that that was the case. But when you're dealing with stakes that are life and death, a half a percent is not a risk that I want to take. It's just not. So I was thinking about all these kind of different factors and, and ultimately, you know, I knew that if this came out in a Netflix documentary that everyone saw, then that gives me some level of protection um, because now it's just out there. There's no use in, in doing anything to me. Everyone knows I'm the one that got it. So if I mysteriously was, you know, offed or whatever, you know, it, it, it was just out there. So ultimately decided, you know, I, I want to be careful with how it's presented in the documentary. Those were kind of my stipulations. Um, you know, I wanted it to be well known that this might be nothing, that we don't really know what this is, but that it did seem odd. Also, kind of side note, uh, you know, between, it was about eight months between I got that footage and when I, you know, first showed it to Netflix. And that was months and months before the, the trial happened. But during those eight months, I actually did um, show that footage to two different law enforcement officers. One of them who actually um, well, was former law enforcement um, and was actually a part of SLED. And, uh, and they told me uh, that the Murdochs did have connections with SLED and that they had even been invited with other SLED agents out to... Um, out to the home for a shooting day or a barbecue or, or, or something like that and they said that they didn't go um, but they said that that happened so um, you know that that just kind of bolstered the the small small possibility that this was nefarious and that SLED was involved and that that if I just only sent this to SLED then that could potentially put me at risk so yeah ultimately made a decision uh, to have it included in the Netflix documentary and then um, my hope was that the Netflix documentary would come out long before the trial ever started, um, which just didn't happen. Essentially, a few months after I had shot with Netflix and, and showed them that footage, um, I started working with the Luna Shark Productions team, uh, David Moses, Mandy Matney, Liz Farrell, Eric Bland, that whole crew, and um, showed David the footage. And um, you know, they, they, they kind of agreed with me that it's not likely that this was anything nefarious. Um, but they recommended that, you know, at that point we knew that, you know, Creighton Waters was going to be the prosecutor. And so, you know, they recommended, hey, you know, send an email to Creighton's assistant 
um, you know, since it's looking like the Netflix documentary is not going to be out in time, and uh, then you can know that the prosecution has that information if they need it. So, so I did do that, and uh, they they never responded, but at, at least I knew I gave them the opportunity to have it if if they needed it. Lastly, um, oh yeah, so I I also did try. Um, kind of closer to uh, when I got that gun footage before I had ever talked to Netflix or anything like that when I was still wrestling with what to do with it I did reach out to uh, John Marvin Murdoch now I didn't reach out and say hey I've got footage of you and Buster carrying guns out of the house what does this mean um, that I, mean, I just wasn't gonna do that <laughs> um, and just let them know that I had this footage I, I did just ask you know hey I'm, I'm working on this project I've, I've been I've got a few videos out on this whole saga, I've tried to be really impartial and really fair, and I'd really love to hear your perspective on, on this. Um, I messaged him on Facebook and, and didn't hear anything back, which is understandable. He has no obligation to, to speak with me, but, and then also reached out, you know, living in the same area, we have a mutual friend, and so I, I reached out to a mutual acquaintance of ours and who did message him directly on his cell phone. And long story short, the meeting never ended up happening, but uh, my hope was that I could potentially I hadn't really made up my mind with how I was gonna do it yet but bring up that footage and, and see if he had an explanation for it and give him an opportunity to say hey it was just this or it was just that um, but never you know never had that opportunity to, to do that um, but I, you know I, I tried so if you're not subscribed yet I'd be honored if you hit that subscribe button this is actually the first video that I've done that's kind of lower quality that's not super highly produced I am working on a highly produced episode 9 to the Murdoch series, but I'm considering doing a few more relaxed videos like this one. Maybe one where I give some commentary about what I felt the Netflix documentary did well and got right, and what I think they didn't do too well or might have gotten wrong, as well as one of maybe me doing the same thing, where I look back at the content that I've made over the past year, year and a half, and talk about what I felt like I got wrong at the time and what I might have done differently looking back now. I'm kind of on the fence about doing those videos or keeping this channel strictly the more highly produced content. So if you would be interested in seeing those, then be sure to like and comment on this video, um, share this video. If this lower produced video does well, um, then maybe I'll upload a little bit more frequently uh, some of the videos more like this one. I honestly can't put into words what it means to me that so many of you guys like and appreciate my content. So thank you so much for all of your support and encouragement. It means the world. See you all soon in episode 9.